Hi all, let's look at another amazing game from the recent London Chess Classic. Alexander Grishuk was playing against Vichy Anand in round 6, playing white. Kicked off with c4, the English opening. After e5, already quite a surprising move was played here. d3, quite often knight c3 or g3, they're the most popular moves. d3, only 171 main games in live book compared to thousands for these other usual responses. Apparently Vichy took about three minutes here uh, for his move thinking. He played now knight c6, so maybe he hasn't specifically prepared for this system with the early d3. Knight f3, we have f5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, we have bishop b4 here. And quite often in this position, by transposition, knight c3 is played uh, with the common continuation, for example, black taking off on c3 and playing like this, where queen e8 often to h5 later is a common theme for black, black giving up that dark square bishop. And you'll note here that uh, without knight going to d5, then you know, the c7 pawn is not such a problem. In this game continuation, we see actually bishop d2, which does have the big advantage now that the knight can go to c3 and then maybe later to d5. We see that after bishop takes, white takes with the queen. So the knight can come to c3 and maybe later to d5. So this standard maneuver of queen e8 to h5 will be inhibited if a knight's on d5. You see consoles, knight c3. d6, white consoles, bishop d7. And you might think what's well, you want a peace outpost on d5 here. In, in fact, quite a tactical move. Instead, knight d5. But positionally, it opens up the c-file against black c-pawn if black takes. And it's tying, of course, down the queen, as mentioned before. The queen can't use that standard attacking maneuver of a knight, annoying knight on d5 hitting c7 here. So we see black taking, c takes, opening up the c-file, of course, for white, knight e7. Now here, instead of e4, black would do best here not to play f4, but instead to lock down d4 because f4 there's d4 and that's that's very good for white there's a lot of pressure here undoubling the pawns with good pressure but here actually black can get a good position with c5 maybe even follow up with b5 so that's not the idea though after knight e7 to play e4 the idea was queen b4 hitting b7 here we see knight takes d5 if rook b8 then rook fc1 is slightly unpleasant for black. And if black dare take the, the pawn here, this, this variation, we have knight g5 here hitting the bishop and d5. This is unpleasant for black. With a rook crashing through to the seventh rank. So yeah, black's got to be careful about when exactly to take on d5, if at all possible. So here, after queen b4, it's in this position that actually the pawn is taken on d5. It looks on the surface, you know, tactically troublesome. But um, the retreat here, queen b3, is not so dangerous as the previous position shown because bishop e6, knight g5, this continuation is vastly different, you see. A rook is not crashing through to the seventh rank. Black has opportunities for queen d2 and f4. So not so good there. Knight takes d5, the idea of queen b3 is not so good here. Instead, the idea is queen takes b7 though, fracturing a bit black's pawns. c6, we see knight d2, threatening bishop takes d5, check. Knight b6, this pawn is immune because rook b8 is embarrassing here, be winning a piece. So that's ignored. We see queen a6, d5, and a slight defect of black's position is the backward pawn, as well as maybe the knight is slightly misplaced out of the game. White's bishop looks more comfortable here, and the rooks are potentially going to pressurize the c6 pawn. So although a seemingly counterintuitive idea of not having d5 for a peace outpost, 
has resulted in a more committed pawn structure from black here, especially of concern, potentially backward C pawn. We see rook a c1, and black tries to go for an attack of sorts f4. But we see white calmly playing knight f3, and now queen f6, and now we see queen a5, the queen getting onto the dark squares, king h8, b3, and now maybe a slightly dubious move from black here. Perhaps black should continue in attacking vein with g5, holding the c6 pawn, still with queen and bishop. This position with g5 should be okay uh, for black. It looks very, very aggressive, but it might actually be okay here, just about. Maybe d4 is energetic though for white with a small edge to break up black's pawns. But in the game, actually, we see bishop g4. Turn this off for a moment. And yes, there's a weakness of the last move. It's not on c6. A white kind of pounces on that partially with this next move, queen c3, hitting both the neglected c6 and e5. Now, black doesn't really want to part with his light square bishop that easily. Instead, Vichy plays e4. And it looks very, very tempting to squash the bishop, if possible, all the way to h1. It looks as though the bishop's in a prison. But the thing is, how effective is that prison if that prison scenario is going to emerge? We see queen takes f6, rook takes. Knight d4 with pressure on c6. The knight looks very comfortable on d4, especially better place than its counterpart. But f3, black's idea, imprison the bishop. And how many of us would play this? With this bishop on h1 is this terrible or not the thing is about this bishop imprisoning white has an advantage for the backward pawn and the bishop imprisoning you can imagine moves like this and in particular h3 resource being able to unimprison that bishop so blacks actually maybe has a more significant issue believe it or not in the c6 pawn than white's issue of the h1 bishop being temporarily out of the position. Rook c8. And we see now rook f8 echoing back row weakness. You know, if c5, rook takes c5 with deflector rook away from the back row. Black makes some space for his king. And maybe c5 is, is useful for black. White stops that before doing anything for unimprisoning the bishop. Locks down against black c5. We see knight a4. And now rook e3 putting the pressure on the f3 pawn. Black holds that for a bit, but now the resource h3. Yeah, the prison can't be held for this bishop. Bishop takes. And not taking with the bishop here, which would leave that doubled rook pressure. White cruelly uh, makes sure that the double rooks are going to be a thing of the past here. Bishop d7, bishop g2 g5 and now a pair of rooks come off leaving black with that backward c pawn basically white has a very comfortable position here beautifully placed knight on d4 look at that knight that in the center look at the bishop is now healthy again not blocked in and actually white improves this knight now with knight f3 to go to e5 instead more aggressive on e5 not just hitting c6 but a load of other squares and near near black's king a bit king g7 knight e5 asking the bishop to go away from there still clinging on to c6 though black's clinging on we see bishop h3 now introducing potential ideas like bishop d7 maybe one day we see h5 is g4 a concern? No, white actually plays d4 here. d4 in this position. Let's have a look. If bishop h3, you might have expected bishop d7 to be the idea. Why wasn't bishop d7 played? 
bishop d7 it's it's actually a reasonable move for white it seems well at least from an engine point of view this seems to be uh, a reasonable position although black looks to have some activity it's okay for white uh, bishop h3 uh, with the idea it looked to be bishop d7 but yeah this move d4 instead is actually the top engine choice and it's the move that Grisha played instead grandmaster games are not necessarily following the logic of a then b then c etc it's taking each position on its exact merits it doesn't matter what you've played before it looks as though that was the idea but here after g5 we see this d4 move it further locks down the c6 pawn so maybe there's going to be a breakthrough with b5 just to crash the rook down to the seventh maybe that's an idea now for example we see knight b6 now possibly here to stop knight c4 to really stop knight c4 white could actually use the outpost square c5 and then maybe like this and if knight c4 we've got rook takes g5 as punishment but white played rook c3 and it does allow this knight c4 why is black interested in knight c4 it's to try and get some play here this is a very very difficult position indeed what is black actually doing in this position if you look white's pieces are beautifully placed why isn't black following up with g4 this is crazy stuff it's like they're playing a and not b all the time in this game why isn't black following up with g4 let's just check this out why didn't black follow up g4 bishop can drop back here and then maybe rook a3 yeah this is this is going to be unpleasant so black's not that keen on, on that move and you might think hold on a sec wasn't there also an idea like this this is almost uh, a plausible sacrificial possibility actually it's, it's given us a small advantage for white as well but uh, maybe instead of g4 here um, maybe h4 is going to be useful but uh, g4 as well knight c4 it's not so clear so white doesn't need to use that pawn sacrifice to desperately get a rook to the seventh rank so he's just holding things yeah and Vichy sacked a pawn here basically and knight c4 takes 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 for rook d6 simplifying getting rid of the knights we see a3 bishop f7 now rook c5 looking at the g5 pawn but offering d4 takes takes now check rook c5 putting pressure again on the poor c6 pawn check bishop d5 threatening a mate in one bishop g2 rook d2 white takes of course if takes now the bishop returns piece up c takes king g2 to protect the f2 pawn king f5 rook a5 yeah it's looks to be very good for white here takes on a7 d4 now here perhaps white should actually chase the king away here to the default try and get the king on the default to maybe you know if necessarily block the pawn this this might be one of the better moves in this position it still requires accuracy uh if we just check this out this is this is a very critical position it seems rookie seven check is is one of the better moves get the king on the default and then say king f3 and if d3 then start pushing these pawns it will be very dangerous like b6 here is possible for example like this and th this is this is good for white but uh, in the game continuation there was an opportunity it seems here white played b5 or an opportunity it seems that black may have been able to consider a move like d3 maybe not here though there's a check let's have a look 
not d3 rook b2 pardon me hitting the b5 pawn first no well this is this is the game continuation I think certain sources have indicated d3 is an idea but I'm not entirely sure now looking at this concretely rook a4 seems to be holding an advantage for white this position here is is uh, looking good for white in any case okay so we have rook b2 a4 Ah, it's here actually. It's more significant. D three as a as a resource. Try and uh, maybe maybe the best idea. D three here. This position with rook d seven could be getting tricky. Rook b four is f three check though. But if the king's active like this, this position is starting to get tricky yeah h4 it's starting to get tricky with that pawn there so it's d3 here which is more significant than earlier but instead maybe black made things vishy and made things a lot easier it's this position pardon me king d3 makes things much easier for white now the task is made easier rook b7 supporting b6 the king is in front of the pawn here b6 white sacrifices a pawn to accelerate his own past pawn here so he's only one pawn up but after rook b8 black is in severe trouble black's losing this quite clearly now in fact so much so that vichy and resigned the problem is with the king blocking his own pawn if it steps out then b7 or rook c8 check and th this is no good white's queening very quickly here this is no good yeah the the, the chance to generate some counterplay has gone really yeah it's gone after rook b8 this this is pretty hopeless position if here b7 if we look at this position why is it hopeless with the king on d3 as mentioned if it steps out there's always this check basically there's always the check and queening this is not good this position here if rook b6 let's have a look at rook b6 f4 or king h3 king h3 i think white can just make progress with his pawns basically so if the king steps out there then there's check and then we queen if black waits then white's just going to make more progress over here king h4 and black is pretty helpless here he's gonna his bits are gonna start dropping off and this g pawn now so yeah it's it didn't help this king d3 at this at this point king d3 here stepping in front of the pawn d3 was i think the last try so this is at move 51 this might be an opportunity d3 to make things a little bit tricky uh for whites whites actually it seems whites most accurate move is rook d7 uh because if if say rook b7 then this this is actually given as totally equal uh this this position totally equal so if black's best move is the immediate on d3 the immediate rook d7 white's best move to have any advantage yeah rook b4 now if instead of f3 if we try rook d8 here takes this this position we see it's an improvement on before um but still tricky okay it's it's still an advantage it seems for white technically but how much
is black able to set up a fortress and, and then can black draw this rook and pawn and then you really need an end game expert uh, or table base to check this out uh, it seems the evaluations are quite stable they're not actually going up that easily so it might be that's when that happens it's kind of a fortressy scenario where it might actually be a, possible to draw even though materially it's down the pawns are fragmented the king's very aggressive okay so yeah maybe there was a point where it could have been salvaged here but uh, yeah king d3 sealed black's fates really with this ingenious pawn sack yeah rook b7 very strong idea uh, offering that a pawn just to accelerate the b pawn here with the unfortunate king position here okay what do we take from this game well there's an early opening innovation c4 and then d3 it's very interesting it's it's very original i think grishuk wanted a more original game where both sides are on their own resources well or, or that he's researched the positions more from that distinct d early d3 move it seems black got um a structural defect defect in the position in the form of c6 pawn later and the knight on b6 was was a bit passive white got a dreamy type position against c6 black lashed out imprisoning the bishop it seemed promising but not so it seems as though the bishop could be unimprisoned with white still having positional trump cards white froze the queen side first before doing the unimprisoning routine uh the extra pawn was carried through but maybe a little bit shaky some uh, opportunity existed for black for d3 so yeah it seems as though even you know the rook and pawn endings a bit shaky maybe white could have done better to avoid some counterplay with rook c5 instead of rook c3 to stop this knight c4 pawn sack because uh, the knights the knight for white was superior at that time than black's knight but anyway uh, an interesting battle here in round six and the only decisive game of the round so i thought it should be covered here okay hope you got something from it comments or questions on youtube thanks very much